Okay, so uh, Jim asked me to share a little bit of the background of what uh, four people's effect of what I would call discipleship and mentoring has had on my life and Lynn's life and, and our marriage and our home. Uh, we've done discovery with him for a while, and as he has noted, and as a result, he's kind of heard this story, but uh, it's, it's pretty interesting, and here's the backdrop to it. I came from a, a home that had only Christian influence through mom. I came to know Christ at about 12 in a dynamic uh, conversion experience, and uh, Lynn came from a home that didn't have Christ. Uh, she was the only one that attended church, and uh, um, kind of had a relationship with the church. And so we fast forward to college. Uh, I went to college, quite frankly, to find a wife, uh, met Lynn, and we got married. And uh, at the time, I did not realize it, but uh, Lynn didn't know Christ. I'd never been discipled coming from a small town and a small church of 150 people. And, and so you throw those things into the hopper uh, of our marriage and you kind of got a tinderbox for some turmoil and some problems when, you, when I look back. And uh, there was a triggering event during this period of time, about 10 or 12 years into our marriage, that kind of brought all of this lack of discipleship and whatnot. And I would pause to say that three years in, then came to know Christ. And so there was a minimum amount of Christ and understanding of Christian marriage, but not very much because of what uh, the homes that we came from. And so uh, 12 years in, we had a very difficult thing happen in that one of our children uh, began to enter into the beginnings of a very severe mental illness that uh, Lynn and I now know through something called NAMI, the National Association of the Mental Ill. Um, our marriage really shouldn't survive this particular illness because it's so chronic. Only about one out of 10 or at best 15% will survive it. So you throw that in there you then throw in the fact that I've begun to commute to Fayetteville, Arkansas to work, uh, leaving out, uh, we lived in Pine Bluff, by the way. I would leave out on Sunday night about eight or 10 o'clock at night and I wouldn't show back home until the following Friday night or Saturday about noon. Uh, just had some real, real turmoil and issues. And so in the middle of all of that, things start coming apart pretty much in the home, in the marriage, and, and you, just, you just pull it all together, and I'm about on the verge of a mental, mental and physical breakdown. And one morning, about 4 a.m., I'm sitting on the couch uh, praying uh, and, and using the level of Christ understanding, Christ follower understanding that I had, and I cried out to God and said, Lord, you got to send me somebody to help me get out of here. Lynn and I were in a denominational church and weren't being discipled there. I was actually <laughs> leading and teaching the young adult Sunday school class in the middle of all this and, and just really, really needing direction. And I asked God for it. And I actually, being as immature as I was, gave God a date to come and send me somebody. And this would be in about 1988 in May. And I said, Lord, I, I got to rest this summer. And on September 1, I, I'm all, uh, I want some help. Uh, that shows how mature I certainly was. Well, on September the 2nd, a man named Philip Glasgow came into my law office and wanted to create a foundation to feed the poor in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. We spent about 45 minutes on the uh, legal part of it, and then Philip, who I later uh, come to know well, operated in a very dynamic way in the spiritual gifts, and he just looked at me and said, man, you got a mess in your life, don't you? And he said, uh, you need to come over to my house tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock and let me and my wife lay hands on you with some of our friends and pray for you. And, of course, that was very unique and foreign to me coming from where I was coming. And I said, no, thank you. And uh, he left and I fought with the Holy Spirit for a few little bit. And the Lord kind of reminded me that I asked him to show up on September 1. And the fact that he was, quote, a day late, I suppose I could uh, see past that. Anyway, that began something that was very wonderful. Philip Glasgow and his wife uh, began to pour into this mess of a person named Lee Moore, uh, who was responsible for a lot of the turmoil in the home and so on and so forth. And I began to get to watch what a Christian home looked like through Philip and Jill. I would go over to their house two or three times a week and they would pray for me and we kind of would have a little Bible study. And I got to watch them interact and with their children. And I got to see what 
real Christian love looks like, and I got to see what a Christian home looks like, and I got to see what a Christian father looks like and a Christian mother. And uh, there was a song by Carmen at the time called I Want Some of That. And the Lord began to put that in my spirit, and I began to go, I want some of that. And uh, slowly through that discipleship relationship and, and pouring into my life, uh, things began to happen, and I began to change. Now, Lynn wasn't a part of this at the time because of the woundings put into her uh, by me in various situations. And she's just kind of standing off of afar and watching me, but slowly seeing me change. And this took a long time for her to, to buy into the realness of what was going on, how the Lord was using this couple to disciple us, or me at the time. And, and slowly and peripherally at the, during this period of time, she gently began to embrace uh, Philip's wife, Jill, who's the sweetest human being uh, that I've ever probably known. And, and we began to develop just a little bit of a relationship and, and things were, were, were a little bit better. And, and Philip began to teach me a, a lot of things about spiritual warfare at the beginning and things that were very foreign to me and understand them. And then the Lord, uh, had to move Philip and Jill on. He had to move to Birmingham, Alabama to get a job. And that was kind of a difficult time because I had come to rely on that relationship and the mentoring and the help and, and the friendship. And uh, so I kind of, you know, moved back to the side a little bit and I went, what's next, Lord? How's this going to work? And kind of decided, well, maybe I know how to do this on my own now. And uh, turns out it didn't. Uh, uh, 30 days later, for lack of a better word, I'm in a, a noon Bible study at that denominational church I'm in, and we're studying the scripture about how God's interested in all the details of our lives, and he knows the hairs on our head. And this gentleman by the name of Bruce Lawson, who was an elder in a church called Family Church there, which was exactly like New Heights, he was attending uh, the Bible study, uh, perhaps looking for people to help, I don't really know, but... Uh, I made some real foolish statements about how God was concerned with world peace and didn't have time to deal with the details of my life in that Bible study. And Bruce later said that, uh, I guess the Holy Spirit kind of said, hey, you need to, you need to help this kid. He doesn't have a clue. And uh, so uh, Bruce began to pursue me, and I actually resisted him at the time. And uh, he would just, uh, he'd call me up and he'd want to eat lunch, and he'd probably call me seven or eight times, and, I, and I'm was very busy, uh, still in the middle of commuting and at home some here and home gone and whatnot. Anyway, finally to appease him, went to lunch with him one day. And that began uh, a remarkable friendship between uh, Lee and Bruce, a love relationship that I can't describe to you that lasted probably 20 years. Uh, Bruce just passed away back in the spring in a nursing home. He had gotten Parkinson and he died of COVID. And anyway, uh, that's the background of that little thing. But Bruce began to challenge me and come into my life. He began to, uh, for lack of a better word, to be honest, and I kind of resented it, proselyte me to move to family church where he was. Uh, Lynn and I were kind of over still in that church, uh, the denominational church. Slowly, Lynn uh, began to uh, get to know Rachel, uh, Bruce's uh, wife. We were still in the middle of this extreme turmoil with our child and the mental illness that, to be frank, had some demonic overtones to it. And Bruce and Rachel would just come and, and get in our lives. And, and uh, sometimes when I would go home at night, I would go by their house and get in the floor in front of the fireplace and just, they would lay hands on me and just pray for me for like an hour and, and, and encourage me and, and, and explain that, that uh, God was there and that he was going to see us through all this. And, and he did. And, and while that illness is still there and, and difficult and, and a part of our lives and takes up time, uh, we learned how to handle it through Bruce and Rachel. And I, I just wish I could explain all of what they did. And, and finally, through a circumstance and an event, we did uh, leave the denominational church we were in and we did go to family church and we did become a part of that. And, and as a part of that, Bruce and Rachel did these amazing things. They, and I use the word forced, they just encouraged us. And uh, they, they, they took us through things like steps to freedom in Christ. And they, uh, they taught us about uh, all kinds of spiritual things by being in their home at night once a week, sometimes on the weekend. And then they just, they just moved us along. They, um, they, they forced us into becoming home group leaders. And, and they did things and challenged me because of 
uh, it, it, those things are hard and they take lots of time and, and I have a job that, that requires long hours and lots of time and lots of intensity. And so I have to, have to kind of fight that issue. But uh, anyway, they would take us to spiritual conferences. They would do all kinds of things. And the result is that um, we learned how to live. We learned how to be married and we learned how to survive. And uh, the, the end result of all of this is, is that when I look back, and of course we've lost Bruce and Rachel, uh, we see her occasionally, and I look back, the only reason I'm here probably uh, able to share this experience is because Philip and Jill and Bruce and Rachel took seriously the, the seventh item here that Jim had on the seven habits of a, of a Jesus follower. They invested intentionally in discipleship making. And I now know why. I'm here today because the Lord is convicting me that I need to reorganize my life so that Lynn and I can uh, invest more in discipleship making. We should be out here, quite frankly, at our age and where we are, but for the illness and maybe the, the demands of my job, doing more in terms of disciple making. Uh, it's kind of I'm kind of treading on cheap grace of Bruce and Rachel when I don't go out here and, and get more intentional about that. So. In result is Lynn and I will be married in January for 45 years. We probably wouldn't be married, but for Philip and Jill and Bruce and Rachel. Uh, we, we, don't, we, we sit around and, and, and think about them often, and we catch ourselves saying things like, Rachel Lawson taught me, Lee, you don't have to attend every argument that you're invited to. And Lee, you don't have to be wrong to say you're sorry things that have, have gone well in terms of all of my relationships. And so, two things I'd leave you with. Those of us who've been discipled and know a little bit and know how, we need to be actively involved in it. If you don't have someone and you need someone like I did, cry out to the Lord. Ask Him to send you somebody. He did it pretty much two times for me. He knew I had to have them and He knew I needed them. And I know that I wouldn't have made it on my own and by myself if He hadn't have done that. And here's the basic thing that Bruce and Rachel did to us, that if you're going to go out and get involved in disciple making, it's not hard. They just loved us. They just poured the love of Christ into us. And I am so thankful, and so is Lynn.